Well, thank you very much, Stephanie. That was a, a really lovely performance. Um, really, really enjoyed that one. Um, we had a lot of people watching and um, thank you to everyone who, who liked and shared and commented as well. Um, Stephanie, how are you doing? How, how was that for you? Yeah, that was quite, quite relaxing, really. <laughs> oh, very nice. Um, I, know, I know tonight was... Um, we were focusing uh, on you a bit more tonight, and um, uh, we were uh, we asked you to play some of your favourite songs. I was just wondering if you could um, you could tell me a bit about why they're your favourite and why you picked them for tonight. Quite a lot of the, the folk the folk songs were ones that I've learned from childhood. So the first school I went to, the um, the headmaster was really into the singing and he would get he would get us in different year groups to sit in the hall and he loved playing the guitar and he would just teach us all these songs the only one i didn't put in which is one of my favorites is what should we do with the drunken sailor <laughs> <laughs> should be should be a good one to do but i couldn't quite remember how it went <laughs> I'm not sure what, it, yeah, what sort of occasion, is that, is that fairly easy to play on the harp? I think it probably is. Right. <laughs> I just hadn't practiced it. Right. It'd be good um, for a pirate sort of theme. Yeah, well, we'll have to do that. If anyone's watching and 
fancies us doing a pirate themed uh harp show then pop it in the comments <laughs> um yeah I, I was um so you had some traditional songs that you were playing tonight but you also had um some of your own compositions as well i think is that right yeah so i had a piece called to the mackerel which is about going out on a boat hunting for mackerel another one was it was almost like a, a prayer it's called the vigil it's about a, a lame girl who prays to uh, the statue of the virgin mary and then she she um I've just mucked that up. I've just pressed the wrong thing. Um, <laughs> so she prays to the Virgin Mary and then she's healed. And it's almost like a reflective prayer that she's she's doing. Mm. And then I had another piece that I wrote about the pottery shore. And it's about Brown Sea Island, which is... I was hoping to play on the balcony and you would have been able to see Brown Sea Island out of the, out of the window, mm. but um, it was a bit too windy and I've also got hay fever, so it would have been a bit of a disaster. Um, but on the other side of Brown Sea Island, you've got the old pottery and you've got Ooh. all these broken pots and bits of brick. And because the harbour's so shallow, the water just sort of tinkles over it. It sounds a bit like or oh, when you go to a garden centre and they've got those little solar powered like fountains that make kind mm. of a tinkly sound because they haven't got much power. Mm. That's what it sounds like the others on the the shore of Brown Sea Island. And it's just about sitting there and hearing those waves and just being in the moment. Mm. So, so how do you take something like that sort of experience and then how does that turn itself into um, something that we heard tonight at Harpsal? I, I picture in my, my mind. So I have, I've got a tiny little harp, which I take out sometimes and I do a little bit of composing in the place. But you normally land up with a dog in your face. <laughs> Wherever I go, I land up with a with someone else's dog just wanting to be with me. <laughs> Which, you know, it's, I don't mind, but it's it does get in the way of composing. So <laughs> I I tend to like you just sit there for a bit, or I quite like sketching. So I might have a sketch button, I would sketch it out, or take a few photos and things. And what I, then when I get back home, I, I actually need no one in the house. I can't, I can't compose with the people in the house. So when everyone's out, I just, yeah, I can just picture it in my mind and just play around on the harp and compose that way. Mm. And I guess then certain things will connect with that image or memory more than other things and then it's built up like that yeah you can kind of remember the, like the the sound and the smells mm. i tend to sit there sometimes with my eyes closed and just listen to what's around me mm. so do you find that um you deliberately go out to these sort of places and try and have these sort of experiences in order to create a song or do you find that you're kind of listening to the sound of the waves and then something will happen or is it do you have to make you've got maybe a deadline or something and then you you're using those memories as inspiration um sorry i've kind of thrown three questions at you <laughs> it's okay i i don't go out to look for them i tend to um if i've been somewhere and like I've got quite a few pieces I wrote about Pembrokeshire and there's certain places that they stick in your mind and then you you recall them and maybe you're just playing around on the harp and then those 
places pop into your mind and you write a piece about those places if that makes sense mm. sure yeah 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 <laughs> I, I yeah i understand that um so you'd be yeah you, you kind of play around on the harp i guess you're yeah you're playing the harp most days and then a song will kind of organically sort of come from those memories i guess yeah sometimes like in the past someone says can you write a piece of music about this and i'll have to like shut myself away and think mm. and make sure that i have to have an image in my mind mm. have you um have you ever had to travel somewhere sort of quite ridiculous in order to get the uh the experience of that place in order to be able to i don't know justify a uh, no. <laughs> no. I haven't done that. Yet. No. No. I uh I've heard that dogs um dogs seem to like human music. So I'm I'm going back to what you were previously saying about dogs interrupting your creative flow. I've heard that they respond quite uh quite well to different types of music, human music. So maybe yeah. that's what it is. <laughs> All right. um, Although then as I'm going for a walk, drop in there their tennis ball at my feet. I'm not singing as I'm walking. <laughs> I, I don't know, they must they must sense it. Um we we had a we had some uh quite a few questions actually um uh on Facebook. Um so David Pickett wrote in, he says, question for Stephanie, has she ever tried playing harp through some effects, e.g. delay and or reverb, that would still keep the natural sound of the harp? A few years ago, I tried using my electric guitar's reverb and delay pedals on my classical guitar and was immediately surprised at how the effects added an inspirational new dimension to my classical guitar, for me at least. But having said that, it could be argued that the acoustically beautiful sound of the harp does not need interfering with. I have tried. I've got a pickup in, in this harp and I've got an effects pedal which I've got for my electric cello. But I have to admit, I'm not a fan. <laughs> Maybe I haven't, I haven't tried it right. I just mm. I remember playing around with it on the cello. It sounded really cool, and on the mm. harp, I, it just sounded like a bad harp. Mm. But maybe it's worth exploring. Maybe I need some help with it. <laughs> oh, I'm sure. I'm sure you know a few. Um... Well, I know you live with a, a musician who might be able to help with that. Yeah, he might be able to help. <laughs> um, David also wrote in, he says, um, uh, do you ever play music from other cultures? Uh, some Chinese music sounds great on my guitar using typical pentatonic motives, etc. Um, actually, there is, a, there is a similarity between Celtic and Chinese music in some way. Yeah, there is. I um, Before the lockdown and everything, I was exploring new exam music for teaching my pupils. And I found a great book of Chinese folk songs for the harp. And mm. I, I was really enjoying teaching those and uh, learning them myself. Mm. I can't I play them on the Celtic harp, but on the bigger harp I can. Mm. Are there the, I imagine the differences are quite subtle, but they. It's, yeah, it's, I think with the Irish music they, and the Chinese music, they both use a pentonic scale, which is five notes. So that's where they got similarities. Um, mm. Irish music's got a lot of ornaments in, which kind of disguise it sometimes. Mm. That makes sense yeah um for me as a layman i understood pentatonic scales um but and yeah well, 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 yeah what is an what's an ornament in in music then so if you've got a melody which just went <laughs> that was a rubbish i was in difficulty and you could go you put just extra notes in them. So it might be just this note written in the music and you would 
or go. Ah. Just to make it, just makes it more exciting so that you're meant to, every time you play a piece, you do different ornaments. Mm. So no two like renditions of it ever the same. Mm. But it does then, depend uh, on how tired you are. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Whether you can be um, bothered to do more than one, I guess. Um, they, uh, so we had another comment as well. Um, Debbie Johnson. Um, Debbie Johnson Hodge, she commented, she said, uh, beautiful. And um, we've, got, <laughs> we've got a few more questions from David as well. He says, um, I've asked this question before, but can't remember the answer. Not sure. Does Stephanie pluck with just skin, between skin and nails, or just nails? Uh, my finger pads. Mm. So I don't do, use my nails. It is literally on the side of my fingers. I don't know if you can see. I've kind of got lumps. <laughs> I've got like <laughs> mega calluses on, on these end bits, so you kind of play with it ah. on the side. Mm. Well, I've known I've known guitarists to be quite proud and somewhat competitive over their calloused fingers. I don't know if it's the same in the harp community. I think quite a lot of harpists want pretty fingers. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> but it means you can play the harp. Yeah, my left hand ones are are really leathery from the cello as well. <laughs> <laughs> oh. You'll have to um, manicure the the top half of it and then I got, yeah, keep this side for practical use. <laughs> <laughs> um, and David, David says, he's got one last question as well. He says, um, says, I never see her turning the page on the device. Is she using a foot pedal to turn the pages of the music? No, I'm using the keypad, the up and down buttons. <laughs> <laughs> so what I've got done is I play a lot from lead sheets because basically I, my eyesight is not good enough to have it written out. So I've got massive notes with the chords over the top and I put them in a keynote thing, like a you know slideshow so I can just press the down button. It's amazing. Before I was like turning pages and my music stands on the edge of breaking. Mm. So uh, this is amazing. The future is here, everyone. Yep. Future's <laughs> on your MacBook. <laughs> um, Stephanie, I know, I know you um, you played some Celtic hymns tonight. Um, can you talk a bit about why maybe they're so significant for you? And The Kelvin Grove. Um, I was some of them I was really excited to find that it was actually a folk song because I'd only sung it in church as a really slow dirge and then I discovered actually it's a, it's a really cheerful folk song and I was like great I'm gonna play that and Be Thou My Vision is one of my favorite tunes Um, it's a really old Irish tune and last year me and Richard had it as one of our hymns at our wedding and it was our wedding anniversary on Monday so I thought I'd play it. <laughs> <laughs> oh lovely that's that's one year today is it? Uh, uh, not today, one Monday, year sorry. on bank holiday Monday. Bank holiday Monday. Oh, well, congratulations both to both of you. Um, I, I also um, a little bird told me that for your wedding day, you actually um, you made your own wedding dress. Is that I is that did. correct? It cost me twenty five <laughs> quid. Oh, <laughs> uh, that that's the I haven't I haven't actually heard anyone doing that before. But I, I also know that you've been fairly productive in what you've been sewing and making um, yeah. over lockdown as well. And I think you're wearing something that you've made yourself yeah. tonight. I am. Um... This was in the, the Knitter magazine, and I was like, I couldn't actually afford the proper yarn because it was going to cost 60 quid. So um, I used a substitute, and it's come out really nice. <laughs> it's nice and warm and fluffy. 
So how long, how long does it take to, to knit something like that? Um, it takes about a week, but I'm really fast. And I just, I look at the pattern and I just memorize it, which is a bit yeah. freaky. So you just have to look at the, the thing and then that's it. That's all you need to do. Then it yeah. just sort of a jumper appears. Yeah. I'm quite quick at knitting. So I'm not actually sat there for the whole week, just knitting and knitting and knitting. All right. I do do other stuff. <laughs> yeah. Not, not just knitting and, and harp playing. No. <laughs> oh, oh well thank you stephanie um uh, for everything today um we had one more comment um and i'm not sure what you'll say to this but um it's from chris uh yetna van dyke he says i missed her music but i'm enjoying the q a will this be posted to view later uh chris it will be up permanently so you can always go back right back to the beginning um and hear stephanie's performance um he also says uh, does she have time to play an encore right now? Oh, <laughs> I could do. Might have to get Toby to turn the microphone on. And okay. I could I could do an encore, especially for Chris. How okay, about it? this one's for you, Chris. Okay. Ah, oh, and Sylvia says excellent as well. Brilliant, thank you. Thank mm -hmm. you. Oh, thank you very much, Stephanie. That was, uh, that was a lovely way to end this. Um, we had uh, you had one more comment as well from Carol Brooke, who says uh, she says she misses you. Oh, I miss teaching her too. <laughs> oh. <laughs> She's oh. one of my piano pupils, the coder. Oh, there you go. Thank you, Carol, and thank you to everyone else who who commented and asked questions tonight and um, and liked and shared. And um, Stephanie, thank you to you for, for playing and and for answering my questions too. Um, this has been One City, One Light, um, Songs of the Seals. Um, thank you and good night. <laughs>